Hello, everyone. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to talk about the subject of different zodiacs and different types of astrology. Um, if you are part of astrology communities on Facebook, anything like that, you've probably heard a little bit about this. Tropical versus sidereal. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry, because this presentation is going to tell you as simply as possible what that means. I'm just going to share my screen here. I'll do a little presentation. All right, so types of astrology. First, we're going to be talking about tropical astrology. Now, tropical astrology is mainstream astrology. It's the astrology you know about, you hear about. It is horoscopes in the paper. It is the sun sign you know about, right? Now, the basic sort of thesis for tropical is that <clears throat> the start of the zodiac, which begins in Aries, begins at the spring equinox, right? So the spring equinox happens and that's Aries season kicking off. What does Aries season mean? Simply, that's the time that the sun spends in that sign. So some of the strengths of tropical astrology, and I'll move this so you can read properly. It is super popular. It is well known. It is the easiest by far system to find info on if you're just going to be Googling or searching or talking to other people about it. And it is comparatively quite simple. It has a set of very logical rules, and because of these logical rules, it is quite easy to understand when compared to some of the other systems, and this is, of course, relative as no matter what astrology, astrology you choose to study, um, this is the sort of subject that you could be learning your entire life on, right? So, but if we're just talking about the basics, the rules, it is a little bit on the simplest, right? So I studied tropical astrology for 10 years. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and everything that I teach you in this course is going to be applicable to tropical charts, is if that is what you choose to use. In fact, some of the things that I will be sharing with you are more applicable to tro tropical than anything else, right? <clears throat> so I got you covered if tropical is what you are looking for. I do want to talk, however, about one sort of issue with tropical, and that is if you go outside on the spring equinox and you look up in the sky, the sun is not in Aries. It is in Pisces. Right? What guess? Okay, so this happens due to a phenomenon called precession of the equinox. Now, this is a little bit of a um, high-level concept to be diving into in a basics course, but I really want you to like understand the sort of scientific fundamentals beneath the science right from the get-go, right? So I'm going to explain this as simply as I possibly can. The Earth spins on like a slight tilt, right? So over time, the sign that the sun travels through during the equinoxes changes. Now, this is the actual phenomenon behind the astrological ages, right? Are we in the age of Aquarius? No. Why? Because on the spring equinox, the sun is traveling through Pisces, not Aquarius. This is very simple, actually, but also very hard to find. You you Google what age are we in, how do we define the astrological ages, and I swear you will find so many different answers, but it is really quite, it's really quite simple. Um, you'll find this, there's allegorical tales, um, and by that I just mean like stories that seem like they're stories but are actually um, alluding to natural phenomenon all throughout all sorts of different types of religions, all through different types of cultures um, that will talk about these like epic battles in the stars between the bull and the ram. And that is an entirely different rabbit hole that we could go down. But for the moment, um, just take it as this. 
this is the this is the phenomenon behind the astrological ages and simple as that and it is also a very like quick indication to see like how very far from the actual scientific roots of astrology that many practicing astrologers are right um that is also a tangent i could go on but i'm not going to go on we're going to keep it simple here today right so basically i'm just saying this because you have almost certainly all heard about the age of aquarius and you know it just shows how out of touch with um, the actual night sky a lot of astrology is. And my goal with this course is to show you how to align to astronomical reality right from the start. And like I said, if you want to continue to keep using tropical, this course will get you set anyways. But I'm hoping that I can keep you sort of open-minded to um, some other stuff right from the get-go, right? So oh, now we're going to talk about sidereal astrology. What's sidereal astrology? Well, the word sidereal means relating to the stars, right? So from the get-go, that already seems like it should make sense. So sidereal, like tropical, divides the zodiac into 12 equal parts. It's like a little pie divided in 12, and every sign gets an equal amount. That's the same in sidereal and in tropical, right? So sidereal is the zodiac used by Vedic astrology. Now, this is Indian astrology, and it is a very, very ancient um, spiritual science, right? And sidereal adjusts it, right? Because we mentioned how uh, with the wobble of the earth, things have moved out of alignment with what they actually are, right? And they've moved out of alignment by about 24 degrees. So if you think about these little equal pi pieces that are each 30 degrees, that's almost an entire sign, right? So in sidereal, we keep the equal pi pieces, but we adjust it to be like much, much closer to what the stars actually are. So we got tropical uses equal 30 sign divisions but it uses old, outdated calculations determined by scholars who believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. And there's sidereal, which uses equal 30 sign divisions and adjusts the calculations to more resemble the positions in the actual sky. There remain some issues with the sidereal systems, and that is that the constellations aren't actually all perfect, all 30 degree pie pieces. They're, they vary in size, right? Like um, Aries, for example, is quite small. Pisces is huge. Virgo is the largest constellation. Um, Libra, pretty small, you know? So there is actually quite a wide degree of variation. Now, Vedic astrology, which uses sidereal, is a serious spiritual science that people spend lifetimes, yes, multiple learning. Now, and like this is a huge tradition which has been passed on for a very very long time in a lot of ways like they are the masters they've had a um an unbroken line of tradition right um you know there's tons and tons and tons of wisdom to be gained from studying Vedic, but it is an entirely different system the charts look totally different um and there are all sorts of other divisions, calculations, and considerations that can start to apply the appropriate nuance to this variation of sizes, okay? However, like, it's an entirely different system. So without going full-blown Vedic, you're going to lose all of these, like, additional considerations that apply more nuance. And really, what you're going to have is a map that is closer, much closer, pretty close, to the actual stars, like my chart personally doesn't really change that much if I swap it between this and what we're going to talk about next, but not quite, not quite because of these changes of size, right? So now we're going to talk about something called true sidereal astrology. Now in true sidereal astrology, this is the most accurate option that we have while still working within the Western framework. 
Fu Sidereal is a relatively new type of astrology, which takes its inspiration from ancient astrology and uses 13 unequal sized sign divisions that match the actual constellations. At this time, it is extremely misunderstood, but it is also gaining rapid popularity as more people become interested in astrology as a way to become more in tune with the cosmos and nature around them. True Sidereal, for the rebels, the witches, and the truth seekers. Let's see, I'll move this right here, that works. Okay, so this is where we get into, well, first I'll finish talking about True Sidereal itself. Okay, so it's, it is very, very misunderstood. You might have heard it being talked about. You might have heard about the 13th sign, a few kiss. It is very um, tossed under the bus. And honestly, um, a lot of people from the tropical world who talk about it um, tend to think that it's a tradition that doesn't really know what it's talking about, basically. Um, but it's a, lot, it's a lot deeper and more interesting than that. And for that reason, I'm going to tell you a little bit um, more about it. So True Sidereal deals with occult mystery, okay? Um, the 13th sign of Fucus is, which it incorporates, right, is known as the serpent bearer. Um, it is a medicine person who can heal, who um, can travel between worlds. There's some very interesting mythology there that I'll go into in later videos, but for now, we're just skimming the topic, right? Um, and it takes inspiration from the Babylonian zodiac, which actually predates Greek. So this is bringing it back to the further roots of um, astrology as we know it. And in the original Babylonian zodiac, they used 18 unequal signs. So because we're not dividing everything into the 30 degree pie chart. It makes things a little tricky, you know? However, it does make like actual sense in accordance with astronomy. In true sidereal, the chart you pull will match the stars in the sky. So I'm not gonna harp too terribly much um, on why that's important. I think that like most people could understand why it would be important in a study called astrology, right? All of the ancients, all of the original astrologers were astronomers. Now a little bit about my story, okay? Um, after spending a decade with tropical astrology, I finally got curious about sidereal. When I first saw my sidereal chart, you know, I was familiar with my tropical chart. When I saw my sidereal chart, I was shocked and I was like, oh, I don't know about that, you know? Um, but it kept sort of creeping back into my consciousness, being like, oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? Oh, you know, how about this? And I would ask people about sidereal, and, you know, um, there's a lot of talk in the community that, like, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, but it kept coming to me, like, hmm, well, in a study of the stars, I feel like the stars should matter, you know? So I conducted an experiment. And for a year and a half, I observed the new and full moon cycles in both tropical and sidereal. And after this length of time, it became quite clear to me that sidereal was more accurate. So I guess the stars matter. So if the stars matter, then the actual sizes must matter too. Shortly after that, I found out about true sidereal and I haven't looked back. And once I shifted my practice over to something that like actually aligned with material reality, something like really, really, really clicked in me. And at that point, I started to use all of this information that I've been gathering for over a decade, and this is like 12 years at that point. And I started doing professional readings for people. And I've been doing that successfully um, for a year now. And, you know, the the type of work that I'm seeing in client sessions, the kind of accuracy that I'm seeing in client sessions, um, you know, just like speaking to stuff that really, really resonates at this point, for me, it's just cemented it. Like, this is the only astrology that I practice. So a little recap, right? 
This course is about the very basics. Really, what we've talked about in this video, bringing up the session, is probably like the highest level that we're going to cover. So almost everything that you learn is going to be applicable no matter what zodiac you choose. And some of the stuff, the stuff that isn't applicable or is less applicable is actually applicable to tropical too. No matter where you sit on the line, this is the right place for you for learning the anatomy of a natal chart and figuring out these basics. However, I hope that through this, I can empower you to remain open-minded and curious about which system to continue with from the start. So for a last little recap, we've got tropical, which is mainstream astrology. It uses equal 30 degree pie pieces for each sign. It does not align with the stars and it changes the signs to match the seasons instead. Then we have Sidereal. Sidereal uses equal 30 degree pie pieces for each sign. It aligns pretty close to the stars. So it is close, but not quite accurate. It loses a lot of nuance when not used within the Vedic tradition. And then we have True Sidereal. Uses 13 unequal size signs that match the actual, actual constellations in the sky. So this tends to be viewed as a tradition that doesn't know what they're talking about, but is actually filled with really dedicated people who are trying to bring the practice back into alignment with both reality and its ancient words. In this presentation, I hope I've given you some stuff to think about, and we are going to hop in next and take a look at an actual chart and what everything means, right? And in this course, I'm going to teach you how to run all three of these different types of charts, so don't even worry about it, okay? I'll see you in the next video.